Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. Um, today I want to talk to you about uh, some new research in the influence running has on joint cartilage. Now I think this is a really important topic, particularly around the effects running might have on joint health, on arthritis and things, and it's still a topic that's not very well understood. There are a lot of runners being told that running is still harmful for their joints, particularly for their knees, um, and actually often told to stop. Um, or at least reduce and cut down their running. So I wanna have a look in this video at some of the research around this, uh, some of the latest research, particularly a new review on how running does influence joint cartilage and joint health, and also give you some take homes on when are we seeing that actually running is too much for someone? What are the signs we might wanna cut back or potentially stop? Now I've also put a link to a selection of our free running injury videos. Do check those out. There's loads of good options for you to look through if you want to learn more about the assessment and treatment of running injuries. Now let's start by having a look at some of the research on asymptomatic runners in terms of joint health and the influence of running. Now, uh, Holger et al. have had a look at this and they've done a series of studies where they actually did MRI scans on asymptomatic runners. They looked at the knee, the hip, and the lower back. And then they got those runners to train for and complete a marathon, typically running around 500 miles during the, the training and then completing the marathon itself. And they repeated these MRIs. So we can see what do these joints look like before and after training for and completing a marathon. And what their findings are quite interesting. So across the, the three different studies, they found that in asymptomatic runners, 36% had a cartilage tear in the knee. And in that study, they actually had a runner with a bucket handle meniscal tear as well, asymptomatically. 61% had disc degeneration in the lumbar spine, typically at the lower levels, L4-5 or L5-S1. And 90% had an MRI, MRI abnormality in the hip in asymptomatic runners. Now, for, for these findings, they didn't tend to worsen despite training for and completing a marathon. So what it seems like is that many of us have asymptomatic changes within the hip and the knee, and it would seem also the lower back. Um, even, you know, even runners with you know, no symptoms whatsoever may well have these changes in the joints but the running doesn't tend to worsen the majority of these changes. Um, so they may well be normal findings. Now, a more recent review, Carnotool did a big systematic review of studies looking at this. Like how does cartilage respond to running? That's the question that they asked. Now, the majority of the studies they found focused on the knee, uh, but they looked at both the acute response uh, to, to running, so looking at the immediate response, and also the response to sustained training. And this gives us a bit of an idea about how the cartilage does actually respond to load. I think this is important because for our patients, they want to know, well, what's running actually doing to my knee or my hip? So it's important that uh, we can help them understand. Now, looking through this big review, I found uh, some, some quotes I think really perhaps highlight, um, you know, the, the findings more clearly here for us. So what they found uh, in this Carnotool review is they say during running, in order to mitigate the high forces experienced by cartilage during running, intrachondral water is exuded from regions experiencing loading, thereby decreasing cartilage matrix volume and compressing proteoglycan molecules. So that's like the acute response. The water from the cartilage is pushed out by the impact of running, and that's what you see in the MRI studies. Then there's a recovery process. So they go on to describe this. The extracellular matrix of joint cartilage is porous and permeable. Thus, when load is removed, water naturally migrates back into the tissue. And this recovery of cartilage properties is rapid, often returning to baseline values within about 24 hours. So it's, it seems actually that there's this, this normal healthy response to, to loading from the cartilage, that water perhaps is pushed from the cartilage during running and within 24 hours or so the cartilage returns to its near normal state. They also have suggested that over time then, the joint might show 
positive adaptations to running. The cartilage actually can adapt to running. So it's not this passive structure that is exposed to wear and tear. It actually can uh, adapt to training. So they found in that review some different findings when you look at the response of cartilage in novice runners versus very experienced runners. They even found in studies of multi-stage, multi-day ultra marathon events that the cartilage shows a recovery process as well. So the big take home message from this video so far is that our cartilage is incredible. It's capable of managing impact really well. It has acute response to that and recovers very quickly. It seems to be able to manage uh, longer periods of training and it doesn't seem that those longer periods of training lead to new lesions, new damage in the knee or that they tend to worsen existing changes that we see on MRI. Now, a lot of these studies are going to be based in healthy asymptomatic individuals, but we also do have some studies, particularly in the knee, looking at people who have known osteoarthritis in the knee. And they've found as well that people that are continuing running, they don't seem to have worsening of osteoarthritic changes on x-ray or worsening of symptoms. So we're moving away from this idea that running is harmful for the knee, um, that it's gonna make arthritis worse. And the evidence suggests actually the risk of arthritis in runners is less than in non-runners. And actually, if you're a runner, you're less likely to need a hip replacement than a non-runner. So there's lots and lots of positive messages here for our runners if they're concerned about their joint health. Now, as with every message, it's also very important to recognize how do we adapt it to the clinical situation, the patient in front of us? How do we recognize the limitations in the research? And there are limitations. Most of these studies are done in the knee. There's less at the hip, less at the foot and the ankle. Well, what I would do on an individual basis, if you're working with a runner, is look at how they are responding to their running and see if there are signs that they're the joint, whether it's the hip, the knee, the ankle, isn't managing their training load. Now, intra-articular structures like knee cartilage will often show us that they're not managing load with a swelling response, with pain during range of movement and loading. So if a runner's coming in and you're seeing that there's a clear effusion in the knee, perhaps there's some pain during range, either end of range flexion or extension at the knee, maybe you're getting some discomfort during your single leg loading task, like single leg squat, that is telling us, okay, this, this knee's probably not coping with this leg level of loading at the moment. And usually then if you've got active swelling and joint restriction, you've got pain with simple single leg loading stuff, that person may need a break from running to calm those things down, to allow any inflammatory response to settle, to, to restore comfort during single leg loading tasks, and then to reintroduce running. So if you've seen those signs and symptoms, it, the, you know, persistent uh, swelling, pain during everyday activities outside of running, yes, that joint is not coping. Now, that doesn't mean that the running is harmful. The existing evidence suggests that's not the case, but we know that joints like tendons, like bones, like muscles, if we overload them, they're going to have a reactive response to it. So in that situation, we may need to reduce running down and take a break from it. Um, other signs and symptoms, you may have runners that aren't showing you swelling, they have full range on testing, they can do single leg squats and things in clinic, everything looks fairly good, they're comfortable day to day, but maybe they get pain when they push beyond a certain distance or beyond a certain intensity, um, and then that lingers into the next day. And that lasting response from the joint, if it's sore into the next day, again, usually tells us that they're doing a bit too much, but they're not getting swelling, they're not seeing loss of range, they're comfortable with day-to-day -day activity. In that situation, we'd be a little bit more likely to say, okay, well, let's adjust your training a little bit to a more manageable level. We may not need to take a break if we're not seeing you know, reduced joint range, swelling, et cetera, that we've discussed. So as ever, it's always about working on an individual level 
uh, helping them make an informed choice and balancing out the risk versus reward. If you're working with someone uh, outside of the competitive running season where they've got lots and lots of time before an event, we might be more inclined to say, well, let's take a short break. Let's do some cross training and let this let this settle uh, and bring you back in because you've got plenty of time. If they're working towards a key event for them that's very important to them personally, they may want be willing to take more of a risk, in which case we might tr try a slightly different strategy, perhaps keeping some of the key runs going for a little while if they're happy to do so knowing that the risk may be that they lead to some more lasting irritation of the knee so it's, it's not for us to choose I don't think for our runners um, and that's another key message from this video I really don't think it's for us to say to runners you mustn't run I think it's for us to help them make an informed decision help them be aware of the risks the pros and the cons the options available to them and then they can choose what they want to do bearing those things in mind and think too, runners are not just running for their physical health, they often have lots of mental health benefits as well. So they may well be weighing up the physical effects versus the mental benefits that they're gonna have from running. So it's a bigger picture to be aware of. Okay, so to summarize um, what we've said there, you know, we've asked this, this question, how does running influence uh, joint cartilage? Well, it seems it influences it positively. This recent review from Karna Tool suggested that we might even recommend running as a way of maintaining healthy joint cartilage for all, and all the other benefits that comes with it. Running doesn't seem to increase risk of arthritis in the hip or knee. In fact, it may reduce it. It doesn't seem to worsen existing pathology, but it does need to be at a level that works for that individual. And if we're seeing signs that the joint isn't coping, like pain, reduced range, swelling, etc., then we need to listen to those signs and maybe take a break or, or adapt the training to the right level. Okay, if you'd like to learn more about running injuries, do uh, click on the link to our free running injury videos. Uh, there's lots of stuff for you to dive into there. And I welcome your comments and questions. Uh, I'll look forward to reading those after. Thanks again for listening. Bye for now.